The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A few days ago, I saw something on my phone that was talking about popular names of babies in different generations. So I, I went back to the ni early 1900s, and some of those names were John, William, James, George, Charles, Mary, Ruth, Margaret, Anna, and Helen. And I kept flipping through the, the uh, decades, and those were pretty much the same names for the next hundred years. But I thought, well, let me look back at 2022. Olivia, Emma, Amelia, Liam, Noah, Oliver. Now, most of us here were named after family members or maybe good friends, and there's probably a story around some of those. Um, my name is Catherine Nance Halford. Nance is my uh, maiden name. I, my parents didn't give me a middle name because my, so I was told, because my brother and sister were 12 and 13 years older, and they said, eh, what the need? <laughs> um, I was named after my grandmother, starts with a C, no E in the middle. I have to spell my name every single time. And I really, truly think somebody made a mistake, but it's on my birth certificate, so I can't change it. I know I've talked to you about the Navajo people before in their names, but I wanted to go over it again because I think it's really interesting. When a Navajo person introduces themselves to another Navajo person, it's not just their name, but it's telling them where they're from. When a baby's born, they're given four clan names. When, the Nav when a Navajo uh, woman, man and woman are married, um, it's a matra, it, the, uh, tribe is a matrilineal and a matrilocal, which means the woman is head of the household. And when they get married, they go and live in the community where the woman lives. So the, remember, four clan names. So the first clan name is the mother's. The second name is the father's clan name. The third name is the maternal grandfather. And the fourth clan name is the paternal grandfather's name. So if you, this is a huge reservation, and so if you are coming from one side to another and you introduce yourselves, you say your clan names. And if these two people have one or more of the same clan names, you know they're related. So let's just say there's a child named Margaret. And, and these are real clan names. From the clan Big Medicine People, People of the Valley, Crystal Rock, Mud Clan. So if this Margaret would meet someone else that had one or two of those clan names, they're related. And it's really interesting. Look up the history in, in uh, the Navajos with the names. The Gospels, Matthew and Luke, tell us that Jesus was given his name from the angels. And in our Gospel today, it says that he was named on the eighth day after he was born, the day of circumcision. 
And no other gospel talks about the naming of Jesus, and so today is the Feast of the Holy Name. But where did Jesus' name come from? I mean, we know from the angels. But it's from the Hebrew word Joshua, Yeshua. I'm sorry. It's based on the Hebrew meaning to deliver, to rescue. And that's what he's done for us. And as he grew older, you know all the names that were connected to him. King of kings, Emmanuel, good shepherd, son of man, redeemer, savior, son of God, the Messiah. But before he was named any of these names, he went by the name of Jesus. Just plain old Jesus. And it was a common name back then. Nothing extraordinary about it. I read something recently that said, the extraordinary is always expressed through the ordinary. The ordinary, the extraordinary is expressed through the ordinary. And think how, how we go about our daily lives, this way and that. We're reading, we are, we're writing, we're talking to people. How much we miss. How much of those extraordinary things we miss in our lives. Maybe this is a year I need to slow down and, and see and feel some of those extraordinary things. I taught at an alcohol and drug uh, treatment center in Clarksdale called Sunflower Landing for eight years just before I moved down here. And there were some bumper stickers printed somewhere in those eight years. And on the bumper sticker, it read, Grace Happens. And last week, I found out that Sunflower Landing is closing after almost 30 years. And it's still needed, unfortunately. But maybe with grace happens, with the word grace, maybe we can understand the name Jesus and how he lived through grace. Mary never questioned her role given to her by God. She treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And she never said, well, I want to name him David. My cousin Elizabeth got to name her boy. Why can't I do the same? But Mary... Mary had a lot of awareness, and, and the angel Gabriel visited her and told her what was coming, and she accepted it. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. We're all given a chance to live up to his name, that name that's been around over 2,000 years in this world, it is such a familiar name. And it's not just the name itself, it's people know about the man and what he did. We can live up to his name each day. Whether we feed and clothe the hungry, take care of those who are sick, stand up for those who don't have the words or are silenced. Give safety to those who are surrounded by violence. Give back dignity and self-worth to those who was taken away from long, long ago, like our native brothers and sisters. Jesus is a common name, but it was given to a very uncommon man. He reached out to those living on the, on the margins of life, and he, he didn't just talk to him. He put whatever went his, in his heart into action. And he's asking us to listen and to put what's in our heart into action also. Just as Mary and Joseph listened to their dreams and carried them out. There is so much sorrow and pain in this world. But you know, think about this. When a doctor says your cancer is cured or in remission, when you have a son or a daughter or a wife or a, um, a husband who comes back from deployment, when a person has one more day of sobriety, when there's a tornado in your area but your loved ones are safe, I know, and you know too, that the word of Jesus is on someone's lips or in someone's heart when they pray. And what a difference it can make. So what do our names mean to us? 
How can each of us live our life and give our name meaning because of what we say and what we do? I think with God's help and remembering the lessons that Jesus taught us, lessons from that extraordinary man with that common name, we can make our lives count in extraordinary ways, but in such very simple ways, we can make a difference because grace happens each and every day to us and all around us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.